Today I will teach you how you can create a zero latency discussion between Claw 3.5, GPT-40 or any other model. First let me show you a quick preview of what it sounds like and then I will show you how I did this. Okay, so I just read this story that uh, OpenAI co-founder Schulman leaves Philanthropic, Brockman takes extended leave. So I just fed all of this to kind of our, uh, yeah, conversational agents. And uh, now let's kind of run this and hear what they think about this topic, right? Wow, Schulman leaving Philanthropic is huge. Makes you wonder about OpenAI's future with so many key figures stepping aside. What's your take on this shift? I think it's a seismic shift in the AI landscape. Shulman's move could give Anthropic a major boost in alignment research, but it's concerning to see OpenAI losing so much talent. What do you think this means for the AI safety efforts at both companies? Absolutely. It's a massive shake-up. I think it could signal a shift in AI alignment priorities and maybe even hint at internal disagreements. What do you think this means for OpenAI's mission? That's a great point about potential internal disagreements. Okay, so you get the point. You kind of see how this uh, works now. So uh, now let me show you how I kind of set this up and how we can change this using system prompts and other prompts. So the key to making this feel as smooth as possible, we have to use something called threading. Uh, I'm sure most of you know what that is. And that is kind of running some operations in parallel, right? Uh, because we want to utilize the time actually the agents take to actually speak out the voice played from Eleven Labs. Uh, we want to utilize that time to actually do something else instead of just waiting, right? So you can see I have my query OpenAI function here. This basically just takes the historical conversation into uh, consideration and the prompt. Uh, we want the history so the agent can have some kind of context of what they were talking about in the conversation. And here we kind of have the same setup with the Anthropic function. And we are using, you can see, Claude 3.5 here. And up here we are on GPT-40. Uh, I want to set the tokens to kind of a low uh, count here. Uh, you can see for the intro I just said respond with two sentences max. Because I didn't want the discussion to be too long. But I think we can remove that now to yeah get a bit of a more interesting conversation. Uh, I'm going to fix that soon. Uh, you can see we have the same here. And... We have our text to speech uh, text to speech stream from Eleven Labs, so we're using their Turbo model. Uh, some parameters here we can change, but I think it's a pretty good setup. Uh, but here kind of comes what I want to focus on today. We have something called threads, right? So OpenAI thread, Anthropic thread. We have our conversation flow that kind of goes and sets up all our threads to make this uh, as smooth as possible. So I created this uh, React component here that kind of shows how this threading works and how uh, I think it's a good way to understand it. Okay, so you can see kind of the first thing that happens is that we have a prompt, right, that we are sending to OpenAI and the OpenAI API is going to process this, generate a response and this is of course going to be also generated into audio using our lab Eleven Labs function and here we will kind of play the OpenAI audio that we got back from uh, Eleven Labs, but simultaneously or parallel as we are playing this audio, uh, we have started this thread down here, that is the anthropic processing prompt. So the response we got back from OpenAI is being sent to the anthropic API, and that starts generating an answer to that, uh, parallel with this, right? And while we are uh, uh, also playing the audio, uh, Anthropic is also generating the response and the audio at the same time. So the audio is ready to play uh, exactly at the same time as the OpenAI audio kind of leaves or is finished. And while uh, the Anthropic audio is playing, uh, we loop back. So the Anthropic response becomes the new prompt for OpenAI. So while we are playing the Anthropic response uh, yeah, from Eleven Labs, we are already starting again uh, at the uh, front of the loop, right? By processing the input from uh, processing the output from Anthropic into OpenAI, so we can continue the discussion. And when Anthropic audio is uh, finished playing, we go straight into the OpenAI audio again. So that is kind of the loop and how the parallel threading works, and that makes it a very smooth operation and very enjoyable for the user to listen to instead of have to wait in between uh, each response, right? And we are kind of utilizing the time 
it takes to play the audio in a yeah great and smart way right and other than that the code is a pretty simple setup if you don't count all the threading right uh, here you can see we kind of can set our voices so we set the voice for claude we set our voice from uh, gpt40 and we can adjust this any kind of voice we want but i figured out that we need kind of a voice that speaks pretty fast and i think i found that uh, but to get this working we need something called like a, a current prompt on our initial prompt to kind of get the conversation starting uh, and i wanted it to kind of focus on uh, that we can kind of pick any topic like i did in the intro so i created a common topic variable that just opens if you go up here that opens a file a text file where we can kind of paste in any topic we want right so here i pasted in our uh, open ai information right uh, and that seemed to work pretty good. Uh, I have another topic lined up here. This is about um, uh, American election, something about Trump, Kamala Harris. So we're going to try that out too. Uh, we can also adjust our system roles. That is kind of important to build the characters we want in this uh, discussion. So I'm going to create a new system prompt here. And then we're going to run and see if we try this on the American politics topic and see what kind of responses we get there. So yeah, let's head over. So let me set that up and then we can go try it again. So I just went in here. I changed the prompt to you're a hardcore democratic AI. <laughs> and I changed this to you're a hardcore Republican AI. Since we're going to discuss American politics, I thought that could be like an interesting uh, contrast, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, we have our uh, topic here that is about the election and the vice president. Yeah, something about that you will hear. Uh, so let me just change this to topic. Uh, I think we should be ready to go now. So let me open this. Let's clear this. And yeah, let's run it again and see what this discussion can bring, right? So this might be a bit longer now, but I think we're going to listen to a few responses and yeah, kind of conclude what we think about this. I think Kamala Harris choosing her running mate is critical for maintaining the momentum her campaign has gained. It's fascinating to see how she's manoeuvring to appeal to moderates by adjusting her stance on issues like Medicare for All. Picking Josh Shapiro or someone similarly moderate could be a smart move to solidify wider appeal, especially in key battleground states. What do you think about her potential VP picks? Do you agree with the idea that she needs someone more moderate? Or do you think she should lean into more progressive policies? Well, I think Harris is making a big mistake by trying to appeal to moderates. She's abandoning her principles and the progressive base that got her this far. Shapiro, or another moderate pick, would just water down the ticket even more. I believe she should double down on progressive policies and energise the base instead of chasing centrist voters. What good is winning if you compromise on everything you stand for? But let's be real. No matter who she picks, Trump is still the far better choice for America. He has a proven track record of results, unlike oh. Harris. What's your view on how Trump should approach campaigning against her? What about Trump's strategy? Do you think focusing on Harris's record rather than her identity is a smarter move for him? You're absolutely right. It's all about balance. But let's be real here. I think Trump should absolutely focus on Harris's record rather than her identity. Attacking her racial background is not only morally wrong, it's just bad strategy. Trump needs to hammer home Harris's flip-flopping on key issues like Medicare for All and fracking. Her liberal voting record in the Senate is a goldmine for criticism. He should paint her as an opportunist who will say anything to get elected. I also think Trump needs to emphasise his own accomplishments more. The strong pre-pandemic economy, criminal justice reform, Middle East peace deals, there's a lot to work with there. What do you think about the debate situation? Is Harris smart to stick with the September 10th date or should she be more flexible? Yeah, I think we got the point here. I think it was a pretty good uh, discussion. I feel like the Claude model was very engaging and was very on topic by being this hardcore Republican. He kind of emphasized that Trump was the best choice, but he also was uh, speaking about Harris's opportunities, what kind of VP should she pick, right? Uh, I think the 4.0 model was a bit boring, so we could have picked a better voice, day, uh, voice there. I really liked the Claude voice, so he was very engaging and very nice to listen to. So I think there's a lot to work with here. Uh, it's cool that we can take just a random topic uh, and discuss it. So 
uh, if we work more on the prompts I think this could be quite interesting and yeah pretty cool I like it and yeah if I didn't mention it uh, if you're kind of interested in getting just this code I'm gonna be uploading this code to my community github so just follow the link in the description become a member of the channel send me an email or on discord and i will invite you to the repo where you can just uh, fork or download this code and try it out for yourself right so yeah i think it was pretty cool so let's just make a quick conclusion on this so if you think about the pricing the only thing that's holding this back now is actually the voices because it's so expensive uh, if we compare it to the text generation uh, the text generation is basically zero. That doesn't cost anything. It's like a few cents, right? But the character or the voice uh, is kind of expensive. So we have the creator. That's $22 a month for two hours of uh, audio. And 100,000 characters. So I actually spent 83,000 characters. So that's around $20. That is just... That's a lot, right? So we actually need the price of the voice to come down before I think this could be super interesting to kind of integrate to any website or something like that. Uh, it's just too expensive now. Uh, but there are open source uh, models we can try to use for this, right? But I wanted a good interesting voice for this. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see now if the GPT-40 voice comes available for, uh, uh, yeah, for the API. And then we can, if it's not too expensive, we can kind of try to start playing around with that. And that is going to take this to a whole nother level, right? So it is an interesting application for the future. And I really enjoyed playing around with this. This threading just makes it feel more enjoyable to listen to because we have the audio ready to play uh, when the other audio is finished. So we don't have to get that latency in between. And that's a good uh, thing to have for the users. Like if we're going to implement this into some kind of app in the future. So yeah, pretty cool to work around it. Like I said, check out the code, become a member of the channel. We got more stuff coming up. Uh, I'm probably going to do some live stream this weekend if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and we speak soon.